She's telling us how she has a $2,500 TV, but is not paying rent. Pay rent every month. What uh, would happen uh, was he was turning around using it for drugs. Sure. I have 11 kids. Yeah. Why aren't they all here? I think they're more or less coming to make sure like it doesn't pop off, man. You know what I mean? Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the Tenants from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I'm your host, James Wise. Behind the scenes, we got my main man, Tommy, cutting up the action for you. Guys, today's show is pretty interesting. Uh, it's another eviction show. I know you guys love the eviction shows. As a matter of fact, our most popular show we've ever put out here on Holton Wise TV was the Tenants from Hell show, episode number eight. That was a live eviction where the tenant actually left driving a Cadillac Escalade. That video is hovering around a million views as I talk to you today. If you are one of the few who has not seen that show, uh, it's in the show notes below. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Now... As I talk to you today, that particular episode of the Tennis from Hell show has over 7,000 comments. And a lot of comments we got on that particular show, there was a lot of people who were pretty upset. I had made a comment about liberals and how they would likely become upset with the content of that show because, you know, we were filming uh, some folks being evicted live. So I just had tons and tons and tons of comments come in. And a lot of people were saying that it was ignorant or irresponsible of me to actually politicize the topic. They were trying to say that politics and real estate investing don't have anything to do with each other. And I, I personally think that's crazy. That's a crazy statement, guys. Uh, you know, the blue and the red, they have two very different thought processes. And depending on where you're at and, uh, you know, what type of uh, political atmosphere you're dealing with in your local municipality, the landlord tenant laws rules regulations etc they're all going to be drastically different based upon the type of uh, you know government leanings that you have in that municipality for example in that particular episode of the tenants from hell show that was cleveland now today's eviction is in a suburb in the cleveland market called lakewood and there's a much more liberal housing court in lakewood and as you're going to see from the footage things about how evictions the actual processes they're actually much different the biggest thing with today's video is the fact that after you evict someone in this suburb called lakewood which is very liberal leaning it is up to the landlord you get to just change the locks on the day you get your writ the day you get possession of your property yes you get to change the locks and regain possession of your property but what you also have to do which is just incredibly burdensome, is you have to actually store the evicted tenant's belongings for up to 30 days and go through the hassle and the effort at your cost of coordinating with that tenant to allow them to get back inside to regain all their possessions. With that said, a couple guys from my crew, Jesus and Tommy, they went out on location to do this. Let's take a look at the footage. Basically, we're going to this place. This lady gets evicted like two, three weeks ago. Like, she comes into the office like, I don't know, a week after she gets evicted and is like, hey, I gotta come get my stuff back. And for whatever reason, like this situation, she gets 30 days to come get her stuff that she like left in the unit. So I go to meet up with her after another eviction hearing on a Thursday morning, and she like never shows up to the place. Uh, I never got her phone or anything like that when I called to, you know, like kind of confirm the appointment with her that morning. So like a week after that, in between, you know, the house gets broken into and all her stuff disappears. And like a week after that, she comes back into the office and goes, hey, you know, I want to come pick up my stuff or the rest of my stuff. And then, I go, okay, cool, let's do this this coming Thursday, which would be today. Uh, 
between like 9.30 and 10 o'clock to go get it. She goes, cool, well, just to let you know, uh, my, my boyfriend already broke into the house, knocked the window out, and, and I, she basically was like, he kicked the window out and I saw it and went in, which, I mean, it's probably a load of garbage, but whatever. Uh, and I took my TV and like all my electronics and stuff back because I couldn't wait. So uh, now I have to go in and get my bunk beds and dining room table and blah, blah, blah. So like now we're going to meet back up with her. But so in between, I like went to the police station and, uh, you know, kind of like reported it to let them know like, hey, this, this lady knocked the window out and broke into the place. Are they going to arrest her? Or I, what do you think I don't there? I don't know. I mean, like they they may actually like not because like kind of like what they told me was that um you know it's a civil matter or something like that which i don't necessarily believe because like if you kick someone's door in like you're breaking and entering it doesn't matter like what the situation is you know i kind of i wish we like could i don't know set a precedent like press charges it kind of sucks that they like won't let us do that like i even told the guy like i was like you know there's I think there was three witnesses. It was like me and then like the two girls at the front desk that heard it and it didn't matter. They were just like, nah, it's a civil matter. I, I even told the guy too, like I verbatim was like, dude, it's like, so if I drop my wallet in a department store and then I walk in, I kick the door and walk in and pick it up after hours, that's not breaking and entering. The guy's like, well, yeah, it is. And I'm like, well, then that's like what they did here, you know? And uh, he's like, no, it's a civil matter. It is what it is. like. I get, I get where they're coming from because there's like a security deposit or whatever, but like in the same vein, like you can't just like walk around kicking people's doors in or windows in because like you forgot something. That's fine. Let me, yeah. let me yep. keep my taser on real quick in case they do get fucking shitty. <laughs> He loved the youth ball play. To to, he said he wasn't waiting. Here, hold on. Hello? Oh, fuck it. Here. Here. Let's see if I can pull it over. I don't have to hold it. Here. Pull it over so you can put him in there real quick or something. What? I'm not. How am I going to move shit and hold the baby? Is that right there? Yeah, they're about to hit that truck. The car. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> I just need them to go make these construction bags. Nobody wants to do shit. Just frustrated. Very, very much so. It's like you ask people to help and nobody, no, I have 11 kids. Yeah. Why aren't they all here? I mean, it was good enough when you all lay in your head and they have nowhere to fucking go. Uh, excuse me, what's no, here? I... When you were laying and not eating food and taking showers, you don't have nowhere to go. And now where are you guys at now? Everybody wants to sit around and watch mom do it? Bullshit, man. Bullshit. Like, <laughs> I'm so fucking pissed. How old's this guy? Oh, oh he's one. Yeah, he was at daycare. Um, I don't usually send my kids to daycare. Um, Thursday, he went to daycare. I didn't send him Friday, didn't send him Monday. Tuesday, I went, you know, I'm a nurse. So they, um, the lady's like, can you check this little baby out? You know, I think she, the mom said she has an yeast infection. I was like, well, the mom best feeds, whatever. That's comical. That's normal. But then I seen little bumps on her. I said, no, she has hand foot and mouth. Mm -hmm. So not even that next day, I go to take him to daycare because he didn't have nothing. You know, and mom's. I'm like, get documentation, make sure that's what it is. And I looked at him this mor in the morning, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So I took him to the doctor, and I'm like, he's got a hand put him out. Here's your documentation, I'll get the daycare clean and get them the fuck out. You know, point blank period. Sure. That's contagious as hell. Well, only within children. Sure, sure. Because yeah, we're, we're, we can fight the virus off. We yeah, can fight. Strength, stronger immune system. Exactly. That's what I said. So within these, ch like, I'm like, he's got it on his feet. And I'm like, you know, it's just bullshit.
everybody's like don't want to deal with them i'm like you guys got me fucked up so we're just gonna sit in the truck and in the cars and just watch mom do everything <laughs> and hold the baby at the same time okay all right well you got you got two hands right <laughs> well, <laughs> mom's a miracle she can fucking do everything right <laughs> i'm like seriously let me go do the washer i need an allen key though i mean, you better bring it on there you know what i got slow here we were just like we were literally just fighting at the u-haul place like literally like I'm putting my hands on a man that I know I can't beat. Like, seriously. Like, Who's that? My baby's father. I'm like, ah, just drive. Go to Lakewood. I don't want you to leave, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I was so mad. I'm like, they fucked up my U-Haul. Oh. They get me shot out of the car. I know it's heavy. Oh, no, I'm, I'm emotional. Yeah, I am. But I know how to control it after a little bit, you know? Sure. Yeah, do I want to go through the ceiling? Yes, I fucking do. <laughs> but, sure. you know. I know, it sucks. Uh, it was, uh, what, was, mean, what was the whole story? Like, what all happened? Because I know you... Well, I was paying rent. Yeah. Remember? And then, sure. Okay, and every time I give him money to pay rent every month, what uh, would happen uh, was he was turning around using it for drugs. Sure. So come to end of it, then I see an eviction every three months. Mm -hmm. So that's when I'd go and drop the $2,100 or the 1800 and you guys see. Yeah. And you know what? Because it would be I, like three months of rent is what you're saying. Yeah, so you, you see what I, if you go back and look at the paperwork, I was I was doing it because Katie, the one that, you know, Katie and Rob, mm -hmm. uh, Katie went and got a five-year restraining order on him because mm -hmm. I guess he was obsessive or whatever. But I've known him since I was little, so I'm like, all right, let me, I had nowhere to go. Let me help you, Blase. My mom just passed away, you know. So I'm like, okay, not knowing the situation I got myself in. Mm -hmm. So then I said, okay, I called Lego cops, get the fuck out. And that's when I walked up to you guys and I talked to you guys and uh, the lady at the desk and everything and let them know, like, you know, I'll take over. Well, they said he had, um, I'll take over as long as the lease is in my name. Well, what she said is, uh, I said, I can afford the 750. They're like, oh no, 895 deposit. deposit. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, well, that would have been different. You know what I'm saying? I said, well then I can't, I can't afford it. You know, so, huh? Well, Drew, I think that's true. So then, therefore, I was like, well, if he doesn't take his name off the lease, then I don't know because they, he wanted him out there saying that I'd take responsibility or something like that. He never did. So, hey, I got screwed. Mm -hmm. You know, point blank, period, bottom line. So, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it. You know, I would have paid it. I would have took over. The 750 kept it going and, you know, maintained and I painted the walls. He did all this shit. I'm like... You know? What? Yeah, I mean, so you haven't seen him since or whatever? Or um, like it's I've seen him when he brought the cops over here trying to take my BMW because the plates are on in his name. Mm -hmm. And I told the cops, I said, no, that's my BMW running in. Yeah. And they were like, oh, no, that's hers. You could take the plates off and plus they're expired. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, no, I haven't heard. I heard you that. Um, I seen his brother the other day. He's like, they haven't really heard him anyway. You know, yeah, well, that's crazy. So what, he just showed up and like knocked the window out on you or something no, like that? No, he came up here it's... with the cops and I'm like, the cops came around, I'm like, what's going on? I was cooking dinner, I was like, what's going on? And the cops yeah. were like, uh, he wants to get his car out of here. I was like, number one, my that the car couldn't move the Sentra mm -hmm. because I was in an accident. Mm -hmm. So I had to get investigated and all this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, after that, then um, I'm like, well, I could get towed out of here or pushed out of here, but... Uh, like, well, that's the BMW. I said, like, I got all the paperwork in the car. You want it? But what were you going to do with it? That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, literally, that's how bad it was. I'm like, like, what kind of drugs are you on, dude? I could see somebody smoking pot or something, but when you're stealing from people and stealing, yeah, sure. You know, it, it's habit. worse than that, dude. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I have 11 kids, you know, and God, don't take from me. You know, I'd help anybody in a heartbeat, but those ain't even our table. Like, it might be yours now if you want them. I know. <laughs> Maybe they're bad vibes though. You don't yeah. Know. I mean, I'm gonna take them. Um, only the bottom two pieces come off. The glass on the bottom two pieces, which I wish you take off. Like, just lift it off. Put your hand underneath and lift it off. Yeah. Take it off. So how like the how like the window thing come to be? Because I know you you you, you like came in and told me like what did he like show up over here and knock this thing out and like oh. yeah it's because that's what you were saying like the dude like oh, showed dude, up yeah and, my son was asleep yeah and I'm like what the fuck happened to the window no I'm yeah. talking about the window in the kitchen oh uh, yeah yeah I'm like the kitchen the window is boarded up in there mm -hmm. I'm like so what the fuck he do come through the house and you know what yeah. the hell happened well you got you said you got your TV and stuff back yeah but right? they did like no we got all our TVs I got a phone call at two thirty in the morning. Uh -huh. 
And the neighbors got cameras. Actually. That it was open, you're saying? Yeah. The window or whatever? No, no, no. The neighbors got cameras talking about that he was around here. And so she'll call me and whatnot. Gotcha. So I said, okay. So I I guess the back door was locked, unlocked. Okay. So when we came over here, the back door was unlocked. So I, I did come in the house. You know, I said, I'll call that the cops. I don't give a shit. Sure. Because I got a 65 and 75 inch, you know, use all this shit that I had. Sure. So I'm like, you know what? If they show up, they show up. But it's all I can Sure. You know how he got in here? Why the back door couldn't have got on lockdown unless you broke in the house? Well, you had to. Have so in. my kids were like, "Okay, well, we're taking all the TV." My my thinking was that front window he pulled it out or something because like I noticed it's gone. You know, he probably climbed through and like unlocked the door. See, that, or that's, a, that's a whole thing. Well, if that's your TVs and stuff, he probably was trying to come in and get them. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's home. Sure. That's why I said, you know what? That's why I said, screw it. I I turn around and. Then I see, like, not even the next day, because I, I think it was a Saturday or Sunday. And I'm like, grab my bed too. Fuck it, while we got a truck, you know. Mm -hmm. The next day is when the um, the window was boarded up and the door was locked because I yeah. double checked. Because I tell you, I come over here every day to make sure nothing comes up missing, nothing's out of place. Because you know, I don't really want it to fall back on me. You know that. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was going through in the end, but God, you know, but. No, I don't want them to come in here and start living in the house, smoking up like it's crack house or something. My shit's in here. You know what I'm saying? Do damage to the property. No. Sure. Not as long as my shit's in here because, like, this shit's going to get cleaned up before I leave. I'm not that type of person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not dirty. I'm not. But I'll be damned somebody takes my shit and I work hard for mine. My, my daughter just broke my 75-inch flat screen TV. We just had it up in the house for a week. You might be able to grab that box for you. I don't know what's in that box. Oh, no, that's, that's heavy. That's what he was. Heavy. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's waiting for my brother or my son. That's a super to My son's going to say, hey, I owe him to him. He's going to be yeah, calling so, a third guy. Huh? <laughs> He'll be calling a third guy. <laughs> no, my daughter and I was out there, and then well, my baby father and everything. I mean, as soon as I put this baby down, they'll get their asses in gear, like, seriously. What's Samantha got? She got grand, she got nugget? You got the screwdriver? Yeah, you think I'm worried about that? I think, yeah, I've seen the window, but we like the back door was unlocked. This ain't like, for me. Yeah, oh, shit's it. already out. Your shit's already out. Yeah, what do you think? I could be at home playing my game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I decided to be a good friend at home. So you weren't going to get that entertainment stand then, huh? He took my 66, I had a 65 inch in here, and I had a 75 inch in the box, so. He took the 65 inch, put it in his room. Yes, <laughs> There's something in it for you. That's why. Because <laughs> <laughs> he does his streaming, or what do you do? Like the what game do you play now? Uh, a lot. On the uh, PS4 Pro. Oh, dude, yeah. Fortnite, Red Dead Redemption. So like, so he took the 65 inch, and then my daughter had a, um, my granddaughter got brought home with a whole bunch of toys. Mm -hmm. And there's this kitty toy that I can't stand, so I just keep kicking it down the stairs. Well, all of a sudden I hear, and I'm like. No, oh, I knew my TV was cracked. I have a warranty on it though, but I don't know, you know. I don't know. I don't lie about this shit, but mm, I'm like, there goes twenty five hundred dollars. You just say it showed up like that. You're fine. No, I can't lie <laughs> like that though. But see, that's the whole thing because it came here. Yeah. It got delivered here, mm -hmm. not by UPS, by like one of those big white trucks. So how do I? And is that a new house? Because we were moving into a new house, so we waited till we moved. I mean, it's pretty weird. Uh, I can't. They're gonna be like, yeah. Oh, he's got it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's a full and a twin. <laughs> it's the only way to move. Swear at it till it goes where you want it to. <laughs> yeah, thank God. It was bending the ramp, dude. <laughs> God. Where's Drew? Somebody needs to go to Home Depot and get with those construction bags. Tell Dijon to go. Hello? You're earning that new TV, man. Huh? You're earning that new TV. Hey, for real. <laughs> I was taking it. I said, you just lost that TV. Hey, you have them things still in here? What? No. No. Bed? I, nope. I told you. So no. what are they I don't know. We were just looking. Look up. Look upstairs. No, but they were, they were right in the dining room. room. They were right there. Right. You know, a lot of. I had things monitor, but out of here. It broke very said, loose. So yeah, it's the front window. What do you mean? A lot of shit was taken out of here. Like the, like the railings, shit like no, that. I'm no, not worried about that. Can we just get this shit going on? I'm worried about it, nigga, because I'm. The fuck? Bitch, I know you don't I care. I don't give a fuck if you care. What if they could be throwing the well, shit down I, on there? I don't give I, a fuck. That's the stuff on the front stairs is mine, but everything else isn't mine. Well, my sons go ahead. 
And like everything else isn't mine. I didn't know they turned off the light. I told them not to turn them off. I don't know. I won't go up there. Excuse me. Nah, there's really not that much. Yeah. There's like going up there for or no? Like all the bricks really. in the backyard are not mine. All that, like all the stuff in the backyard, mm -hmm. that's not mine. Yeah. Just the um, just the little kid's bike, the yep. umbrella, and the grill is mine. Okay. All that other shit is not mine. Um, the BMW and the Spectre, my son's on his way, so hopefully we get that shit towed up out of here. Yeah, you're gonna. That's what you're saying. You're gonna bring a truck or yeah, whatever. Yeah, they're supposed home. to. I mean, it's like all coming down on me. I'm like getting frustrated, aggravated, and I like one person handling all this shit. You know. I know. It's I. I appreciate it though. I'm trying to get this shit out of here. Look, and I'm holding the baby in my hand because he's got hand, foot, and mouth from daycare. Great. You know, that's contagious as hell. Imagine if uh, that was your nurse. It wasn't from me. Yeah. Was, is it for here? That court? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. What's What's the? It's a property. I think I got the paperwork. I'm curious. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's the whole thing. But like when I came, the way I came in, it's the way it was. Yeah. The holes in the wall. My son was gonna fix and everything like that. Yeah. And that's his temper. And the, the window upstairs, he busted. I'm like, okay. If I say I'm gonna fix it, you know, that's not the type of person I am. Right, you know. And now I'm like, now I'm on an addiction with my name not even on it. I mean, because I said, I'll take financial responsibility. You know, I'm a good person. I'm not going to fuck nobody over. Like, I was telling I was raised by a Marine. I was too raw, you know, straight to the point. No bullshit. You pay, you pay. Sure. You no, know? No, you're coming from. And, yeah, and mean, this is just like. So what's it? The court thing for what? Like, I don't, I don't, it didn't say detail. It's just that, um, I think I might have it in my purse. She's 17 
18 years old, my daughter got diagnosed with skin cancer. They got to do an incision from here to here and scrape the bone mm -hmm. to make sure it's not in the bloodstream because it is a uh, type A uh, spit tumor that became, which is a part of the myeloma, my, my, you know, it goes in the bloodstream, okay? So, but. The new brain, I think, right? It's my dad. The what? The new brain, whatever. No, it's myeloma, myeloma, uh, something uh, like that. My, my, you know what I'm talking about. Sure. Okay, but for it to be, my mom had a terminal, okay, because it just went through, not even knowing she was sick. My daughter said this for three years, but she was pregnant, so we never thought, you know, it was like a little skin tag that became, like, big. It grew with her through her pregnancy. We turned around, and we had a little bit of skin You know, so it's nothing far around it, but the day I was supposed to go to work, I'm actually in clinic with her. So I didn't even go to eviction court. I'm like, man, I hope it's not on my record. And when the bailiff came in here, he's like, you're not even on the lease. I said, I don't understand. Okay? The cops were like, look, I said, I, you see half my shit's packed. And then for that room and those rooms to look like that, like somebody scared it through my shit. Because look at all my containers. Yeah, I mean, you see how my containers are as they're coming out or how they were packed. You go on video, all you see is containers packed. I got fucking PlayStation out there, you know, cereal equipment. But that's probably too obvious to walk out the house with. You were looking at my jewelry. I took my jewelry box, you know. But the day I, I didn't go to court. I went the week before because that's what I thought it was. I didn't go that week, you know. And uh, I'm like, I don't need this shit on my record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, well, maybe it depends. But they wouldn't have even known I was here. DEA, yeah. he's a U.S. Marshal for the Clinton Brown. Um, my aunt, and then my brother-in-law is a um, cop for a second, and then my aunt is a sheriff's deputy downtown sexual detective. So, you know, and I'm the worst one of them, you know, but um, he's been stalking her and everything else. I mean, you know, she's a nurse and everything. He's bad. He's bad. Like, and she, she went to court and she got a restraining order on him. And the judge is like, you know, I mean, he's convincing, you know, like, oh, no, no, innocent, but I'm like, I'm glad she did what she did. And then I'm like, ask her, talk to her as a female, female, like, what's going on? Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Thiel, author of the Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price to rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. Josh just got an exchange charge. Oh. He's getting charged as an adult. Yeah. Huh? Where are you see it from? The uh, Star, uh, Star County. Star County is coming to pick him up. He's a juvenile. He's 18 and he was uh, sent over from ODYS, you know, as doing juvie life, mm -hmm. basically, to your like, oh, yeah. um, I guess he just walked up to the gate. Just that he's going to leave. So now they're giving him a state charge. He didn't even leave the facility though. Hmm. I said, okay, well, let me call you back for a second. Um, all the stuff in the basement, it's not mine. The other washer and the same. everything else, and we're just almost done with upstairs. So. Okay. That's good. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. No, it's good. Fucking yeah. hungry and high and tired and I shit. Get it. No, it's night and day different than it was. So, yeah. 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 Really good. It's cool. I'm trying, you know. Sure. Cool. I appreciate it, you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, your brother's. Uh, in charge of an adult, Joshua. You're giving him a cake charge. Everyone saw that? Huh? Yeah, everyone saw that come? Oh, no, I guess he just watched the thing.
Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for watching our content here on Holton Wise TV today. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you that wasn't necessarily made clear in that video, that entire process, what you saw my guys out there doing, that whole process took over seven hours. So don't tell me that politics doesn't have anything to do with real estate investing because it absolutely does. Whether you lean left or you lean right, you cannot deny the fact that the political atmosphere has a lot to do with the types of uh, processes and procedures that take place when landlords and tenants have to interact. So I want to hear from you folks. I want to hear, are you leaning left? Are you leaning right? Do you think the process you saw here today in Lakewood, this incredibly liberal eviction process, is the way to go? Or do you think the Cleveland process where you just leave the stuff on the curb and that's it. Yeah, you got to take it after 530 what's left, but you don't have to store it in the property. You don't have to allow the tenant to get back in. I want to know which process you prefer and why. In addition to that, folks, if you're a landlord out there, I want to hear your nightmare stories. Drop a comment below. I want to hear the political atmosphere that is in the municipality that you're investing in. I mean... Yeah, it's kind of annoying that we had to go through that seven-hour process to allow that tenant access to her stuff after she stiffed everyone on rent. But we're in Ohio. It's still pretty landlord-friendly here. It's not like we're in Oregon or California uh, where it's just insanely liberal and the policies are just, just out of their mind. Evictions can take one to two years in locations like that. So I want to hear from folks out there on the West Coast, the extreme liberal West Coast. I want to hear about some of your tenants from Held Nightmares. And, uh, you know, if your story is good enough, perhaps we'll have you on the show. We'll do a full-on interview with you here on Holton Wise TV for your very own episode of the Tenants from Hell Show. Well, that's all I've got for you guys here today. Thank you for watching this episode of Holton Wise TV. If this is the first time you've ever watched our content, do yourself a favor and smash the subscribe button. If you found a ton of value with what we're bringing to you today, bringing you guys the transparency in the real estate investing industry, do us a favor and smash that like button. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. 
Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.